course, listed it. I sent a text to Bernard and I said, you're going to win this award. And uh, Bernard sent back and said, no, you are going to win this award. And I thought about it and I thought, wow, um, long and meritorious service. Maybe Bernard's right because at the moment that I called my first fight, in uh, 1986 on ABC, he was doing something else uh, and, and hadn't yet gotten uh, involved in his own extremely long and meritorious service to boxing. But uh, I certainly would have been thrilled if, like Ray, I could have shared the award with him. He's uh, more than a dear friend. He's like a brother to me, and, uh, and I love him. And, uh, and so it was a great privilege to see that I shared the experience of being nominated with Bernard along with... Uh, the other nominees, and and it's a really uh, perfect, timely gift to me to be able to be here tonight uh, accepting this award. A little bit of a misnomer, given, of course, that the reality is, as you all know, it wasn't that I performed long and meritorious service to boxing, but that boxing provided long and extremely meritorious and profitable service to me. Uh, I, uh, the, the sport in general has been a gift to me. Getting a chance to call the sport was an unexpected gift that I could not have anticipated during the first dozen years or so of my uh, network television boxing career. But at the end of the day, for, for a kid who was taken into a small room at a party in Hendersonville, North Carolina at age six to, to sit down in front of a television set being told by my mother, you are going to sit here, you're going to watch Friday Night Fights on Gillette, you're going to watch Sugar Ray Robinson against Bobo Olson, it's their second fight, uh, and the reason that you'll be watching this is because if your father, who died last year, were still alive, this is what you would be doing. Uh, and that, that's how it all began for me, and boxing was my favorite sport from that moment on. Um, the very first live prize fight I ever attended was Cassius Clay versus Sonny Liston uh, in the Miami Beach Convention Center, February 25, 1964. That fight was called the biggest upset in the history of the sport. February 10, 1990 in Tokyo, Japan. I rose from ringside at the end of an HBO telecast and thought to myself, oh my God, I just called the fight that succeeded the first live fight I ever saw as the biggest upset in the history of the sport. So there's been a certain poetry and a, and a certain sort of um, fateful predictability about my involvement in boxing all along. Uh, but the reason it's such a privilege to win this award tonight is that it gives me an opportunity to thank every writer in the room and every writer with whom all of you have interacted and whose stuff you've read over the years as you prepared for being where you are. Um, somebody mentioned uh, Michael Katz and Pat Putnam and Ed Schuyler. They were all seated at ringside the very first time I ever called a fight on ABC. So I entered into a, a rich era in the literary history of the sport at that moment. And every broadcaster knows and will affirm along with me that our informational process, our research in boxing, our learning, our fact-finding, our building of information to go into every telecast we do begins with what you guys write. That we are nothing without them. Excuse me. Without the work that all of you do. It would take me all night to list the names of all the writers who have been dear friends and tremendously supportive to me. You need only to read the flowery article that Hauser wrote for the program, uh, and Tom has been a wonderful, great friend all along. Uh, I treasure everything that you guys do. I, uh, I treasure the fact that uh, given the volume of words that are available now on the World Wide Web, boxing's informational process never stops. It's 24 hours a day long. It's not like when I was a kid when I would read one column from Edwin Pope in the Miami Herald every week and then wait for the next one to appear next week. ESPN.com might spit out 12 different headlines on uh, a given day. Boxing's informational process begins when Bernard gets up in the morning in Philadelphia and doesn't end until Lance Pugmire goes to sleep in Los Angeles that night or uh, Dougie Fisher uh, puts to bed whatever he's working on with regard to the magazine coming up. 
It, it is a constant, ongoing thing. And while the world wants to believe that this is a dying sport, we all know that globally it's more alive and better than ever. So thank you for the privilege of being here, and, and thank you for the chance from the bottom of my heart to say thank you for giving me the tools to work with all these years. I really appreciate it.